The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> you think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Well, I must have not been paying attention. When you were just talking to me Well, if he's had enough think that she could repeat the <laughs> question He's had enough, I'm going to bed, he's had enough Can I listen more attentively There must yep. have been something so He's you know, out for the day now nothing. There wasn't quite so easy Getting up and having me pet him, that was it That was it for yep. the activity for the afternoon Exertion for the day <laughs> When you were just talking to me <laughs> Oh, boy Oh, uh, let me see. I think, I think, next week we do a double shot. I think. Oh, you think? Yeah. When will we know? <laughs> I'm going to say we're probably going to know Tuesday. Wednesday the latest, I think. But everything is so up in the air right now. I'm excited. I'm excited. Honestly, I wish I was excited. My excited, my, my my level of excitement has just been drained out of me. Well, your health isn't helping. My health is not helping at all. It's like one step forward, thirty-seven steps back. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ! Every t- every time it looks like like things are starting to look good, it's like you get hit with more bad news. You just go, what the fuck? Yes. Uh, I think Melvin Taylor's playing tonight. Ba-ba-ba-ba. Well, he's good enough to do the Baba Pies. There you go. All right. Yeah, you're looking good. Believe it or not, I actually feel better than I felt yesterday, which is not, which isn't saying a whole lot. But it is better than, but it is better than yesterday. All right, let's get this show on the road, shall we? Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan here with the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, you top two guys smoke shop at the Studio Twenty One. Podcast Cafe. I want to thank my great producer, Chrissy, who puts up with all of my shit off the air as well as on the air, but way more off the air. Believe me when I tell you. All the shenanigans that go on here. I want to thank our sponsors, Century 21, McLennan Real Estate. We've got to get Matt back in here. There's all kinds of things going on with the real estate market in the Merrimack Valley. Um, I was looking, and we had less than a page of real estate. foreclosures and sales in this edition of the Valley Patriot, it's actually getting smaller. Like I didn't think it could get, I didn't think it could get this small and it continues to shrink uh, the amount of uh, property sales. So we've got to get him and he's got this woman who works for him. We've got to get her to come in too. She's a, she's a firecracker. She has little videos on Facebook and we got to get her in for, for all, for all the right, all the right reasons. Would you say it that way? Just to keep ourselves from getting in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. No. Um, So McLennan real estate century 21, the Zany Pesh Law office in Methuen. They do like bankruptcies and property stuff and real estate and all of that. So if you've got uh, some bankruptcy needs, I know the economy's starting to not do too good and it hasn't been doing too good for a while. So if you're thinking about maybe bankruptcy, I guess there's two types of bankruptcy. I didn't know this. I was talking to Vinny the other day when we were having drinks. There's the type of bankruptcy where like they, where you don't have to pay any of your debt and you, your credit goes to shit for seven years and you just kind of climb out from underneath all of your debt and you get to start over, but you get to start over with really bad credit. And then there's another type of bankruptcy where they hold off your creditors, like they, they push it off for like a year or for a certain period of time. So you still owe them, but you're not accruing more like fees and penalties and interest and all that stuff. To, so you can kind of reorganize and then find a way to like amortize your bills. So I guess there's like chapter seven and chapter 11. I'm not an expert at these, but uh, I'm thinking of having Vinny come on some afternoon just to talk about that because I think that would be kind of interesting to let people know about like what the differences is between the two types of bankruptcies and you know, different ways that you can kind of consolidate your debt and all that. Uh, Marsan and Son Construction, EIS Investigation and Gun Training, Time Out Sports Bar in Haverhill. I, I, we were at Time Out Sports Bar the other night. I can't believe how busy that place gets. They've only been open like a month. And every time I go there, I actually have a hard time finding a place to sit now. And uh, the food is very, very good. Now, I'm not a sports guy, and so they've always got like the Celtics or the Bruins or 
whatever they've got up there. So people go there for the games, and I don't know when the games are. So sometimes I go and I think everybody's just crowded there for whatever game is on that night, but I don't know what the games are. So I have to kind of like just like look it up before I go now. Um, Tomo and Shaken Seafood, Clear Path for Veterans New England, AFC, Urgent Care, Pleasant Valley Landscaping Contractors. I don't know if you read Dave Idconsoli's um, post on Facebook today. Hilarious. Know. Hilarious. Hilarious. He posted an email that, uh, that, that he got from somebody, and then his answer, and then their answer to him. Mm-hmm. Absolutely priceless. I loved it. And who did I forget? Oh, and a free shout out to JG's Ice Cream. So there is a fundraiser tonight for Lawrence Mayer, Brian DePina. Uh, I know a lot of people have been saying, Tom, how come you haven't been coming to these events? Or why haven't you been, you know, doing this stuff? I've been a little busy. I've been a little busy. So between doctor's appointments and legal appointments and lawyers and all the other stuff that's going on, I've just not been. But I, but I am going to be there tonight. Um, I know that they asked me to introduce the mayor. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that only because I don't know how my breathing's going to be when I get there. And it's going to be a very crowded room, probably not with a lot of oxygen. So I think I'm going to let Milagros Dominguez, a.k.a. Derma Espada, do that. Uh, or, or, or maybe Octavian Spanner. I know he's going to be there too. But there is a, a fundraiser for the mayor of Lawrence tonight, and I will post uh, the details on that. I'm not, I can't remember... They told me this morning where it is, and I just can't remember when they called me to ask me to do stuff. Uh, but I will post it on, on, the, on, the, um, on the Facebook page. What else do we have for you guys before I get to my buddy Joe Finn? Um, so I think that's pretty much it. The Valley Patriot is on the streets. Um, I am getting a lot of hate mail from law enforcement. A lot of my police friends are sending me hate mail because I reported on the state trooper that was stealing overtime and was sentenced last week. And listen, I'm, I'm, you're never going to find a person who's more pro-cop than I am. But I'm not pro-bad cop. I'm sorry. If you've got a cop that's out there that's friggin' stealing overtime from the taxpayers, I'm sorry. That's a bad cop. I'm going to report that story seven days a week. You know, listen, if a cop goes and gets a free coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, I couldn't care less. If a cop does something stupid in his off time, you know, maybe he gets drunk at a party or something. I'm never going to write that story, right? These guys have a hard enough time as it is. But if a cop is stealing overtime, if a cop is, is stealing drug money, I'm not saying that that guy did that. I'm just giving you other categories now. You know, if the guy's committing arson, if he's, you know, if he's beating his wife, okay, that's a little different, right? And we don't want guys wearing a badge and a gun that are doing those kind of things. So please save your hate mail for me. And please stop starting your hate mail with, I know you hate cops because you're a journalist. Because you, you don't, friggin' don't know anything about me if you start off an email like that, okay? Literally, you're not going to find anybody more pro-cop than I am. You, you, there's nowhere on the planet where you find somebody who loves cops as much as I do. I probably look the other way on more things going on in the city of Lawrence when I'm out there with my video camera. I turn my camera off more times than I can count. And if I was the Eagle Tribune, believe me, some of the shit that I see out there would be on the front page of the paper, and CNN would be running the video every day. So please stop with the emails about how much I hate cops, because if you, if you knew anything about me, you'd know that's not true. All right, so uh, to my left, to your right, we've got my good buddy, Joe Finn. He ran for state representative, did a great job. I think they played a little bit around at the end there. They, 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 they screwed you at the end. They, they got gotcha. you. <laughs> they did. So, so Joe ran for state rep, and they took a quote out of context, and they made it seem like he was saying something he wasn't saying. And because it had to do with killing babies— and because we know that the Democrats love to kill babies, it was all an abortion thing. They took what you said and they made it seem like you were against abortion at any level, for any reason, at any time, for any way that you were against all abortion. Now, that's my position. I don't know anybody who holds my position. I don't, I've yet to meet someone who is as against abortion as I am. I don't, make a, I don't make exceptions for rape. I don't make exceptions for incest. The only time I would make an exception is the life of the mother is in direct jeopardy, like immediate jeopardy right now. She's going to die if we don't do this. And yet they went after you like crazy. They made you look like me. And I felt really bad about that because I think you would have won. I think if they had not lied, if Adrian Ramos's people had not lied about your position, you'd be the state rep right now. And so I feel really bad. So uh, Joe and I have stayed friends since the election, and uh, there's a couple of things coming up in North Andover, but not just in North Andover. This is coming to every community, and I, he, he's been working on this for a while, and we both have the same view of this, at least 
basically the same view on this. And so I thought maybe having him come in and talk about, it's called the MBTA Act, right? Is it, do I have yeah, that MBTA right? MBTA Community Act. Community Act. Yeah. And of course, this is what state reps and state senators do. They give everything these, these cute little names to make it sound like it's really good, even yeah. if it's not really good. You know, I always joked that like if they wanted to stop black people from voting, they call it the Martin Luther King Civil Rights Voting Act. Right, because they have to they have to name things these cute little names to make it sound like it's the opposite of what it is. So why don't you tell people what the MBTA Community Act is? When was it passed? And 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 give us like the good and the bad in that, because I'm sure there's probably some good in it too, right? Yeah, yeah. If I find it, I'll tell you. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> but it really started. It was enacted in 2021, um, and in, and apparently it was in some sort of a budget bill that they, they passed it. And what I did is I had to go back and figure out why are they calling it the MBTA Community Act, But because it, it has to do with multifamily housing, the building of multifamily housing. Right. People ask me. And so when I went back, it said it, initially it was to provide greater access to public transportation for residents in the MBTA service area. Um, and now what's happened is now they're using it really to try to build uh, or zone it's really to zone for multifamily housing in 177 communities. So you don't even need to have... And it's the suburban communities that they're targeting, right? It's not like it's, Lawrence and Haverhill. No, it's, yeah, no, no they, they, they also have to build. Oh, so it's both. Yes. And, and, so, and so everybody's upset. There's a lot of people, a lot of communities upset over the state trying to dictate how the towns, how the communities grow mm -hmm. through zoning. Right. Um, and so, and that's basically what, and that's basically what it is. And so what they, what they did is they defined each of these communities. Like if you have a rail station stop, you have to build so many more multifamily housing as opposed to like North Andover, which is considered an adjacent community because we don't have a rail stop, but we have rail stops in Andover, Lawrence, and Haverhill. Right. And so based on that, they said, North Andover, you have to identify districts, it can be more than one in North Andover, of 50 acres where you can zone for 1,191 units. Now, those units are determined by 10% of your housing stock in 2020. And so we have to now identify those spots in North Andover for 1,191 units. And, and the debate really has to be as to where these site locations are. And so I looked at the bill itself, and, and I also reviewed a number of presentations that were given by, an, by a guy named Ian Burns. He's an economic development program coordinator for the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission that was contracted by the town to give support guidance and expertise in the act. And he said three things. One, it has to do with housing only, multifamily housing only. So you're not talking about single family homes, you're not talking about bringing in businesses, restaurants, things like that. The second thing he said is that it can all, it can, let me just get it right, the land may already be home to multifamily housing units. So you can identify a place, let's say like Princeton Properties, that already has multifamily housing, so you're talking about really replacement as opposed to just adding homes. And then the second thing, it's totally acceptable for the area to never receive development. So you may never see it. And so... Wait, wait, wait. Explain that. Yeah, so... You could actually identify a site that but never, they never build there. They, they never build there. Okay. All right. And he mentions that a number of times in his presentations. And See, uh, it seems that I'm going to declare shenanigans because I've seen the government do this before. You identify the site, then you don't build there. Five years from now, they come in and go, oh, guess what? We just passed another new law and we're going to build there. <laughs> well, let me continue and tell okay. you how this, how this all works out. All right. All right. Now, I'm he, skipping ahead to the end. You are. You are. So <laughs> what, what happens is, so you say to yourself, where does he get that from? And he gets it from the act itself because in there it says, that multifamily housing has got to be as of right, which is important, all right, and that a sufficient number of multifamily housing units could be added to or replace existing uses and structures over time. So what does as like of it, right mean? It, it bypasses a number, of, a, a number of things. And let me just, it, and if I could just, let me just see if I can define it for you. I have it somewhere, but you, it, it's... You, you can bypass certain variances, special permits, things like that that you would normally Zoning need. restrictions. Right. Zoning restrictions. You normally need some elements of town meeting um, that you would need. So it relaxes the zoning requirements for developers mm. to come in 
and build. Now, I, I think I know where this is going. You and I have not talked about this before. We right? have not. But I, I, I think I could see where this is going. This all has to do with illegal aliens, doesn't it? No, no. It's got to. No. It's got to. <laughs> the only reason why they would want to shove multifamily units into suburbs would be to relax the burden that the state has bringing in all these illegal aliens that are now being held up in like high schools and activity centers in Roxbury. Well, let me let me just let me just continue on. All right, okay. So, and then then we'll, we we can decide you know, what it's for. All right. Um, and so, based upon what I want to know that the butler did it before we start. Right, you do, you do. <laughs> so, based upon what we see in the law, based upon what we we've seen from Ian Burns, the Economic Development Court, and what we what we hear from uh, Mr. Goldberg, he is the chairman of the North Andover Planning Board, okay. and what he says when it comes to this, he goes on and says. You are correct, and I'm talking about some of the sites that I've identified. You are correct in that if you do not want any housing built at all, there are better alternatives than what we have provided. And, and see, that's where the, I think, the differences between myself and a number of people in, in, in North Andover that don't want more multifamily housing because it's stressing our town resources. Of course it is. There are others... Who want Look at the monstrosities that they've already put up that are taxing our infrastructure already. They've put up about 600 recently. It's outrageous. Right. It's, it's, it really is. Yeah. It's, it's affecting our schools. It's our water. It's sure. the sewer. It's the character of the town. It's one of the reasons why the schools are $3 million in the red right now. Uh, and, over, and, and, of course, the class sizes. Right. Right. They're some of the highest class uh, sizes in the Commonwealth. Right. And so, uh, but, so, so that's the difference. Because when you talk to, it, to Mr. Goldberg, he says it, and he, he, and he says it, and, and I understand where he's coming from. He says, I disagree with the fundamental theory that building more houses is a drain or is, or is detrimental to the community. I think it's a positive for the community. I think mixed-use development is a positive for the community, so I disagree with the underlying theory. So well, you, but, but he, he's not necessarily wrong too, right? Because like, if I get evicted tomorrow, I live on Main Street. I love living in North Andover. But yeah. if I get evicted tomorrow, the maybe maybe my uh, my landlord sells the property to somebody, and, and I got to go. It's impossible to find a place in North Andover that I can afford. It's impossible. And um, at one point, I was looking maybe to go somewhere else. It's impossible to find housing anywhere in the Merrimack Valley that a, that a normal person can afford. And so. When you have more housing stock, that generally does drive down the price of housing, which makes it easier for people like me who are not millionaires, who don't live out on Salem Street or Foster Street, Foster Road, whatever it is, um, to be able to afford to af afford rent, afford housing. Yes, no? I, I agree that the low inventory is a problem, but I also believe that there are other factors when it comes to affordability, all right? Because when we talk about affordability in housing, a lot of people will say when, it, when your 30% of your gross income is, is, is going to housing or more of it's going to housing, it's unaffordable. Mm -hmm. But what we have, too, is you've got to take a look at some other factors, right? You've got to take a look at the interest rates that we have, the borrowing for the developers, the inflation, all of that. That's eating up a lot of your income. So it's more than just a low inventory. Also, I have a problem. when And, and we see a lot of the people from the urban areas going into the suburbs. But I have a problem when you try to turn your towns into cities. Right. When you, when, you, when you tax your water and your sewer and your schools and your traffic, these are the reasons that people come to the suburbs. Right. And I don't think turning them into cities is the solution. So let me get to the... So what sure. happened in North Andover is that the town has decided to select Osgood Landing, which is 58 acres. You need 50 acres right? 58 acres and uh, market basket, which is 33 acres. So you're looking at 91 acres of land to build on. And, and, and the, the best places to build, according to what I just talked about, are places that already have multifamily housing. They've selected the two sites, that one that are zoned for commercial businesses, which, right? And uh, they don't have any multifamily housing. So what you're looking at is you're looking at 1,400 units that you would build there. On top but, of what we've already built. Yes. In addition to that, you're looking at, because it's zoned for non-residential space, it could be up to 100,000 square feet of businesses that are, it's going to draw in more traffic. Right. And to just give you an example, 6,000 vehicle trips were calculated as the new vehicle trips per day in North Andover based upon the 
uh, the 600 units. We're looking at two and a half, three times that for the housing. And in, in, and in the schools, the, the schools, right, with this, because it's relaxed zoning, there's no restrictions on three-bedroom bedroom apartments. So you're looking at now a real impact on your schools. There's an easy solution to stop this. Very easy solution to stop this. I always go with the, I always go the political route. You guys in North Andover, I love you guys, all you conservatives to death because I'm a conservative. But you guys want to fight the issue. I say fight the people. I say we should actively campaign to put these next door to Adrian Ramos' house and every member of the Board of Selectmen and Planning Board, find out what their addresses are and go to the, their neighborhoods and advocate that we put them near their neighborhoods and you watch how quickly this thing goes away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we had our meeting last night, and in the meetings that we've had, that the Planning Board has had, um, I don't think our state rep was at any of them. Well, she, she hasn't shown up to anything. No, no. So Listen, and and, I, and, I, listen I love Christina Minacucci, right? We didn't agree on anything. Like, she was for abortion on demand up to third grade, okay? And I'm, I'm as pro, pro-life as you can get. But we got along really well because she did her job. She showed up at events. She cared about people. She talked to people about the issues. She showed up when she was supposed to. When she gave her word, she kept it, Adrian Ramos. And Adrian Ramos just doesn't. She just doesn't. I mean, I, I said to, I said to, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but I said to um, Mark DeSalvo, I said, look, I know you recruited her. I know your people supported her. Can you recruit somebody better next time? Like, even if she's a right, even if she's a left-wing lunatic, I don't care if we disagree on politics, but can you get somebody like another Diana DeSaglia or, or Christina Minicucci that cared about constituent services, that took people's phone calls, that answered their freaking emails, that showed up to events like yours, whether they agreed with it or not, just to hear what the other side is saying. And so I don't think we're going to get that. I think she's going to run for re-election. Yeah, and I, and I think when you talk about the other side, that's why I am speaking out, because I think you need to hear both perspectives. I think when you, when you hear just one side, it's not fair to the, to the residents of North Andover or any of the residents in any of the communities. It's affecting 177 communities. But isn't this going to come down the way everything comes down today? Right? It's, it's team baseball, right? Our team says this, so we're going to go with that. Yeah. And then the other team says this, so those people go with that. So the people who are conservatives are going to say no to everything. People that are liberals are going to say yes to everything. And those of us who are in the middle, those of us who kind of like look for truth and facts and how is this really going to help or hurt, let's look at the good and the bad, let's be honest about everything, find almost nothing in the middle. I don't know. I don't See, with this issue, I think it's different, Tom, because I think... People who move into the suburbs are looking for certain things, and they can be Democrat, Republican, Independent, Liberal, whatever you want to say it. They're looking for certain things. They're looking for the good schools, all right? They're looking for open spaces. Um, you know, they're, they're looking at least for, for us, the water, that we don't, we don't start all of a sudden uh, taking water from, from the Merrimack River mm -hmm. in North Andover. So I think there are th certain things where we, can, we all agree on. And I think that's why when I proposed the moratorium, a few years back, two-year moratorium on multifamily housing, just to slow the pace down to see how it would affect uh, our town resources. We got 58, almost 60 percent of the vote right. at town meeting. So I think there is common ground when it comes to this issue, and you see it in in uh, in, in a lot of the communities. And I've and I've spoken to a number of the communities about this uh, before their town meeting to see how they're approaching it. And there are a lot of people who are upset over it. And it, and I'm it, getting a lot of emails from people in Raleigh saying, we don't want this. And these are like selectmen, planning board members. These aren't just like regular residents. The people that are in the know, people that are part of the town, and they're saying, we don't want any part of this. And I think they, I think they voted it down. I was looking they at did. your sheet. I think they yeah. voted it down. But the, the state's fighting them on it. So what happens if North Andover or a Rowley votes it down? What happens next? Does it just go away, or do you get, now you're going to run to court? Well, what, what's going to happen is, is what the, in, in, the, in the law itself, they can take away certain grants, and there's certain discretionary grants that they can take away from. Um, and that's okay. Uh, I, think the, I, think, I think the death of towns is accepting all these grants with all these strings attached to them. I, well, that's part of the problem. Right. Right? And, and now so they, let they them take the bit. grants. Listen, let them take the grants. And that's what some of these towns are saying. Right. Also, what has happened after the law took place is that the AG's office now is you know, had, had mentioned that they're going to sue, like they're suing Milton right now for noncompliance uh, on that. Uh, but there are towns now saying that it's unconstitutional. They're going to court. Uh, I think it's going to happen in, in October. So some of these towns have now kicked this issue down the road until right. after right. this happens in October uh, to see, 
to, in a, and this is a, in a federal court. And I know that uh, Lawrence is actually eager for this, right? I talked to all the officials on Lawrence. I can't find one that's against it. I can't even find one that's against it. They're eager for this because it's more cash flow from the state. Yeah. And they want to build more housing. And I don't know why because Lawrence, and I always like to use Lawrence as an example because I know more about Lawrence than anywhere else because I cover it more. Lawrence is seven square miles. There's 90,000 people crammed into that seven square miles. But it's not seven square miles of habitable land. You get the river running through the middle. You get the cemeteries. You get all the parks. When you take all that out, it's three and a half miles of inhabitable land with 90,000 people crammed into it. And they are building more. They're building more. And I get it because we have a shortage of housing stock. But I always say, why are we building, why are we building multifamily, multifamily Strains the infrastructure, strains your schools, strains your water sewers, strains your police department, your fire department. I talk to North Andover cops all the time. I ask them, where do you spend most of your time? You know, they tell me, walk a road, right? They tell me over across from, uh, from uh, uh, Merrimack College. Yeah. Uh, these yeah, big developments with lots of people in it, and it makes sense. When you cram that many people, and people are like rats, and they're all crammed into one spot, you're going to have problems. Even decent people are going to have problems. No, I agree. I, I agree. I mean, I look, if you want to, this is why I've always said, if you want to live in a city, you can live in a city. If right. you want to live in a town, live right. in a town, but don't go live in a town and then make it a city. Right. Um, because we're all looking for different things. Right. Uh, and what we see now is that, you know, in the urban areas, you see a lot of people now moving out of the urban areas and coming to the, the suburbs. But a lot of things too is that in the suburbs, that they're bringing some of the amenities that you had in the, in, in the urban areas. And you see that even with this mixed use development that they're proposing. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I say obviously that's- I think it's great if a person can, like myself, right? I lived in Lawrence my whole life when I was 41 years old. I could afford to move to North Andover. That was the goal. That was the goal of all my neighbors, to make enough money, work hard enough to get the hell out of here because of the crime and the problems, right? So we, it's great when people can go from the cities to the suburbs, yep. but just like we say with illegal aliens that come here from countries that are oppressing them, when you get here, don't try and turn here into there because you left there for a reason, right? And that's what it seems like you're saying. I left Lawrence for a reason, and my first six months in North Andover, I lived on Brightwood Avenue. I couldn't sleep because there were no gunshots. There were no, no, I'm serious. There, yeah, were no, yeah. there were no gunshots. There was no drunk fights outside my window. There were no police cruisers going by every 15 minutes with their sirens going. There were no fire trucks going by every five minutes with their sirens going, ambulances. It took an adjustment, but boy, I love it now. Now I love it, right? And I think what you're saying is these, these, a, a lot of people come from the cities. They come to towns suburbs and they want to turn it into a city and what does that help you just you left the city for a freaking reason right 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 and, it, and it's interesting I, I, t I talked to someone uh uh last night when we had our organizational meeting and and that went really well but uh he was funny he comes up to me and says you know i didn't vote for you but uh he goes a lot of the people that are here might not have voted for you but they're complaining about these issues and the people they voted for a want the housing. Right. They want the development. Right. And that's, and that's exactly it. And right. it's, and, and I don't know how you, I mean, is it party politics though? I think you're skirting around it. Isn't it party politics? The Democrats want this. We know why the Democrats want this. They want to flood the suburbs with liberals. They want to flood the suburbs with people who are going to vote Democrat, right? They want to flood the suburbs with minorities that we all know are going to, in, in very large numbers, are going to vote Democrat. And they want to turn the suburbs that are not red, red, not, that are not blue, blue. They want to turn them into you look at what North Andover was. When I moved to North yeah. Andover in 2001, we had Jim Cassidy, right? We had the, um, we had the uh, North Andover Taxpayers Association. We had, we had uh, Chuck Ormsby. We had a large number of conservative people that said, stop taxing us to death. And look at it now. We were 60% we were Republican conservative back in 2001. Now it's like 70% Democrat. And by design, it's not like it just happened that way. You've got your, your Democrat elected officials at the local level that are actively pushing to make North Andover a, a liberal blue community and turn it into Lawrence. Well, I can only, I can only, I think I made him nervous by saying all of that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you, you don't. Because I, I look at all these towns. When I went and, and, and knocked on doors, uh, you had a lot of these towns telling me that they're turning 
as a Republican going knocking on doors, we're, you know, we, we're turning more Democrat than we are Republican. Right. And a lot of them talked about because of the, of the housing. So those are what the people are telling me, right. that that's what's happening. Right. And, we, and we see it happening in all the towns. So they may- Why is everybody so afraid to say it out loud? That's my thing. Like, yeah. I go to a town meeting and I say it and a hush comes over the room like Eve <laughs> Hutton just walked in. And I'm like, well, what I'm saying isn't bad. It's just the reality. Like, this is what they're trying to do. They say this is what they're trying to do. Why can't we call it out? But it's interesting because when you talk to the people in town, all right, there are, I think, on, on both sides, on both parties and in independents, there are a lot of people that are concerned with it. That, that's, they don't want that in their towns. The, the problem is, I think, is that you do have people that they, they select and vote for that do want it. Mm-hmm. So if you look at your select boards, and you go around the towns and take a look at your select boards, and you look at your planning boards, and you look at that, it's, those have all changed. And, and, and so you see the change there, but they're the ones, I think, that are driving it. So mm-hmm. if you'd asked our select board, you know, you'd probably get Well, those are your elites. Those are your elite Democrat elected the, officials that suck up to the state party and are just doing what the state party wants them to do. Well, you'll get, you'll get, you'll get in, in North Andover, it's, it's probably four to one. Right. All right? Um, and so... Um, when you had your proposal, wasn't it all of the planning board, the board of selectmen, the school committee were all for the development? Right, the the moratorium. Uh, morat- uh, uh, no, they were for the development, and your people, sixty sixty percent or fifty something percent and fifty eight percent were ag- were for the moratorium. Th- that and the, the Royal Crest development. The Royal Crest development was was the big proposal, right? right. And but almost, I'm saying, look at the disparity between right. the numbers it, of elected officials versus the number of people that were against it. Oh yeah, it's drastic. Uh, you know, Rosemary was the only one on the select board that. Uh, uh, that voted against the Royal Crest. There may have been one person on the planning board, one other person, so, but the, the, everybody else was, was for it. And that's the difference, and this is, what I'm try- this is why I'm out there, trying to give a different perspective. You're listening to people when they give their arguments, all right, that want development. So they're not going to give the other side as you know, right. the other side of the story. Right. That's what I'm trying to do. And can, not, we, and can we talk about who's going to be doing that development? Because that's really where the rubber meets the road, I think. Yeah, I don't know who's going to be doing the development, okay. but... Uh, You're I, not sure about that? I am not, but I can tell you this. I'll give, I, you, I'll give you a couple of names after the show, and then you tell me six months from now if I'm right. Okay. Uh, I can tell you there's probably been negotiations already I when bet, you talk, up, when you talk about have. Osgood, right, and, 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 and Market Basket mm-hmm. uh, on, on that we're, we're going to build. But I think we do have those two competing interests, and I believe... Now, when you say Market Basket, Market Basket's already there. Yeah. So you're going to rip down Market Basket and put housing instead? Well, they're going to bulldoze the entire 75 acres at uh, Royal Crest. Those are like well, how many buildings right. you have there, right. right? To build, and you're talking about 1,400, and you're talking about. But doesn't the Market Basket people own that property? They do. So you'd have to. They they would have to be in negotiations. So this is a, this is just like would you, this is just fantasy time. Then it's a, we don't own the property. We have no control over this property. It's private development. There's already a market there. There's already a a a. a, a words, Tom. There's already a mall there, yep. right? And we're talking about putting housing somewhere that we don't even own, we have no control over. Right. It's just zoning. It's just zoning. But the, I, think, I think the problem is, is that, first of all, as, as I see it, is that why, in, why do we have 91 acres that we've identified when you only need 50? You've got Osgood. If, even if you just went to Osgood, and I'm not in favor of going to Osgood, all right? You've got 58 acres. You've already met. It's already in, in compliance. Right. You, they, they use it as one development. If you have a developer that goes in there, they're going to use the, There's 91 acres you're playing with right there in terms of housing and you're talking about non residential space. You had 75 at our last proposal, and that was going through. Right. They're going to bulldoze the whole thing. Yeah. You don't think they're going to bulldoze that one building right. over at Osgood in a strip mall? That would be, you know, so, so that's what I fear. That's going to happen. That's why I I'm say. I'm telling you, right next door to Adrian Ramos's house, just identify her neighborhood and just put her, just uh, identify that as the place, and I guarantee you it'll never happen. Because it, they never do it to themselves, right? Because I've been dealing with the Barry Feingolds of the world forever, right? They want all this new housing and free needle exchange programs and stuff for the homeless. They want it all in Lawrence, right? They want it all in Lawrence because it's as far away from them as they can get, right? As soon as brown people start showing up in Andover, you watch how quickly everything changes. And we've seen it year after year after year. Whether it's Andover or Tewksbury or any of the other suburb areas, those liberal Democrats, those elite liberal Democrats who don't have to live with the consequences of the shit that they're voting for, the minute it starts hitting their neighborhood and their neighbors start complaining and their local businesses start complaining, all of a sudden it's, 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 a, myth, it's, a, it's a myth now. Now it just it goes away. Well, I wish that the state reps 
were at these meetings that, 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 that were given, at the presentations or even... She's you, just going to vote however, like, however her party tells her to vote. Well, she represents North Andover. No, she doesn't. It's, no, it's, she doesn't. She represents Beacon Hill. Right. Well, that may be true, but I'm just saying, you know... She's supposed you, to represent right. the town of North Andover. And, and th- yeah, exactly. And, but I really believe that you need... And, and it can be either the state rep or the, or the, or the administrators in town or the, or the, uh, the select board, whatever, that you should have... You should give the residents... Both sides of the story. Right. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. And this is it's why just, I, wish, just, I wish we had Christina Minacucci back, because at least she would listen to the other side and consider what you guys are saying. And she might even say, and I've seen her do this when she was a state rep, she'd be like, you know what? These guys have a good point. I don't agree with them on everything. And then incorporate what she does agree with some of the things that you said into like what it is that she's trying to accomplish on the other side, where there was a give and take where there, it wasn't just this walled off, you know, the Great Wall of China, the Liberals are going to go here and the Conservatives are going to go here and nobody talks to each other. Yeah, and, 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 and in terms of what we're talking about here, we're not, talking to, we're not telling people non-compliance. We're talking about you can comply with the law, but you don't have to go in these sites that you've identified. Right. You can go into others, as has m- mentioned by even the chairman of the, of the North End of a... Uh, uh, planning board says there are better options if you don't want building. So right. he's, you know, so we know there are better options out there. That's what we're we're pursuing. That hey, no, we're not saying don't comply. Although let me tell you, if it came down to that, I would vote no anyway because right. I don't think the state should be dictating what happens to your towns. And and it's funny, I've listened to some of the select boards from other towns, uh, Tewksbury in particular, and, and one of the select board members, and they voted three two against it. Um, said. We're not going to turn our towns into a city. And if you think that the grant money is anything close to what it's going to cost us right. in terms of our schools, right. our fire. And that's the bait and it, switch that it, the state plays all the time. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And they always, they, they always threaten you with something. Right. Um, in order to get, and, and, and in my opinion, they want to subject North Andover residents to something that's not, that's unnecessary. All right. That's going to put a tremendous strain on the resources when they, when they don't have to because... They want to point to this law where if you don't do it, you're going to lose your grants. Right. The AG could sue you. They see this as an, op- in my opinion, they see it as an opportunity, all right, to, to, to go after something that's so unreasonable that it's even more unreasonable than the law itself. Right. And so that's how I look at it as. Um, and, and you agree? Right, oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. So tell people, when is town meeting? How can they vote yep. against this? How can they get more information? Maybe they might want to vote for it, but how can they get like neutral information about this and find out what this does, what it doesn't do, and when is town meeting, and we have, how do they do all yep, that? We have our website. It's nandovercommunity.com. And, and, uh, and on there, you can actually get our yard signs, hopefully maybe some volunteers. We need people to, uh, to pass out flyers, uh, to do yard signs. Also, donations uh, is also uh, very helpful because we have to uh, obviously purchase these things. Okay. Uh, we have the town meeting, though. It's on uh, Tuesday, May 14th. It's 6.30 at the uh, North Andover High School. Um, so please, come by. Vote. Uh, vote no. Vote no. on vote Do no. we know what item number it is? I don't know what article it is. I should know okay. that. But right. uh, uh, It's probably on the town website, though, I'm sure by now, right? Uh, have yes. they released the oh, warrant? Yes, They've released the warrant? I don't know. I haven't been on that website. Okay. All right. Joe but, Finn, he is a community activist in North Andover. He was here during the, uh, during the last election, and boy, we thought, he, we thought you had it wrapped up, man. We <laughs> thought you had it won, and then all that, all that political shenanigans went on, and, yeah. and they stole it right out from underneath you, but at least they stole it legally this time, right? Right. right. Uh, yeah, not like Lenny Mirror where they stole it illegally. <laughs> uh, I want to thank our sponsors, uh, McLennan Real Estate, Century 21. Free shout out to JG's Ice Cream. We love the Jafrida brothers. They do so much for the community. Pleasant Valley Landscaping Contractors. I guess Dave Id Consoli is looking for help. So if you want to do contracting work, if you, I mean, um, uh, landscaping work, give him a shout. AFC Urgent Care, Clear Path for Veterans New England, Tomo and Shaken Seafood, Borelli's Deli, and Time Out Sports Bar. And you know what? We give a free shout out to Part 28 right down the street, too. They've got really, I'm not a pizza guy. I'm not, yeah, I don't I'm not a pizza guy, but let me tell you something. If you're going to get pizza, go to Pot 28 and get the pizza. Coal Fire Pizza is amazing. Uh, EIS Investigation and Gun Training, Marson and Sun Construction. And a shout out to our buddies, Vinny. And Jaina Zani Pesh. Did I say it right this time? Pesh. Zani Pesh. I think law office, right. the Zani Pesh yeah. Law Office. 
in Methuen. They do bankruptcies and real estate and all kinds of stuff. Shameless plug for me and the Bellas tomorrow yes, night. Yes, sure, sure. Michael's, uh, Michael's Flatbread uh, Bar and Grill here in Salem, New Hampshire. Me and the girls will be there 6.30 to uh, 8.30. And your girls are oh, oh, very lovely. They are very lovely, and we sing and play very well. So they come check us out job. tomorrow night. Outstanding. We'll see you guys next week. Sounds like Melbourne Taylor says you got to go home, so go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.